Time and again, you hear about how early detection saves lives when it comes to breast cancer. Tonight, a mother of four young children is sharing her story from when she was diagnosed to what it's been like living with cancer. News Source 16's Angela Brower joins us in the studio tonight with our special report, Diagnosis Cancer. Angela? Matt, News Source 16 has made a strong effort to encourage women in our community to be proactive in the fight against breast cancer. From doing monthly self-breast exams to getting annual mammograms, we've shown you people and programs that help. But what does cancer really look like in a community? One woman shares her story about surviving the disease with the help of the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute. Stephanie's nursing for the long her breast. I'm gonna go do my treatment, okay? Mm. Bye. Mm. It was just five months after Joshua Sanders and his wife Stephanie, both from Brownsville, had their fourth baby that they headed to the oncologist for the first time. It didn't seem to be getting better, it didn't seem to be getting worse. We're like, should we go to urgent care? Yes, no, well, let's find out. A time of concern. He starts showing us what's in the mammogram and how there's a lot of precancerous calcifications, is what they call them. And it, he's like, I, you know, we don't get people wound up here for no reason. I am 95% sure this is cancer. And I was just like, what? Over here you see the purple color. It was March when 33-year-old Stephanie was diagnosed with stage two triple negative breast cancer. Because of her age, she had never gone for a mammogram and didn't self-check regularly. A lot of people say, oh, you're so young, they caught it early. Um, you're only stage two, it means early. Um, well, with my type of breast cancer and the fact that it's spread to my lymph nodes, in my age, one in three women will still die. It starts a whirlwind, all right, what's, what comes first? Do you do radiation first? Do you do chemo first? Do you do surgery first? They're like, surgery first. How much do you want to take? We want to take it all. Believing in a team of doctors at the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute, Stephanie underwent a mastectomy. Doctors took her breast in a nine centimeter tumor. They later removed two lymph nodes that tested positive for cancer. Wow, I have cancer, I tell myself. Like, I have cancer, I can't believe even how they lost my breast. Like, it's so unreal. But reality set in, mostly for Joshua. You know, what is it, what is it gonna look like? My wife suddenly got one and not two. What, you know, am I gonna be okay with that? And dealing with it, and yeah, actually I am okay with that. His wife, Stephanie, has not felt any less of a woman, although the surgery proved difficult for other reasons. Because, All right, who's gonna do the edge pieces? Because we... I had to figure out how to wean my baby, and that wasn't just a logistical nightmare, because I had no idea what to do, but it was more emotionally devastating than the breast cancer diagnosis at that point, because um, it was, was a relationship with my daughter, not just a way of feeding her, and I, I just grieved intensely for that. Who wants to read? A mother had to figure out how to be a mom and a breast cancer patient. For six weeks, I wasn't supposed to pick up my baby. And so it felt like a, a sentence, not just of cancer, but of like, you can no longer be the mother to your infant. She started attending chemotherapy treatments for months, sitting in a chair hours at a time, thinking about what could be and what is. It still felt like if I just closed my eyes, I'd wake up and it wouldn't have happened to me. Uh, you pray a lot. Uh, I would work really hard to find things to laugh about. Uh, it's hard logistically as children make cancer. I think they give you something to live for. Living through chemo became a new goal. She felt the nausea take over and experienced canker sores in her mouth, down her throat, in her stomach, and intestines. Mixing the chemo on site, WVCI says they've made an effort to provide utmost comfort. But comfort doesn't always prevent change. Suddenly, Kate, Faith, Caleb, and Joy's mom didn't look like mom anymore. Stephanie lost her hair. When I started to lose my eyebrows and eyelashes, that was hard. I get tired of hearing, you have such a nice shaped head, uh, like it's supposed to make having no hair easier. But beauty is in the eyes of the beholder and Stephanie's husband. She's found ways to, that she can feel beautiful through that in her appearance, in the ways that she presents herself, in the way that she speaks to other survivors. Her appearance a little bare, but Joshua sees Stephanie better than ever. Definitely see the courage of my wife. I knew it was there already. I, I married a sassy girl, so I, I'm glad that it's still there. Staying courageous, staying sassy, Stephanie has tried to remain true to herself and her family. And then people are uh, they also say, oh, you're so strong, or you're so courageous. You know, like, 
because you have to be. There's an, their option is to like give in to breast cancer and die or suck it up and do it. Now for Stephanie, giving in is not an option. She has a family to fight for, just like thousands of other women in our state. Be sure to join us for the second half of Stephanie's story on Monday on News Source 16 at 5.30 when she begins radiation. Her husband will explain what keeps the couple going and what he's learned about his wife in the last few months. Now the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute, Kay Wood and Stephanie's family were so gracious in allowing us into her appointments and sessions. We want to thank them for coordinating this story with us because without it, a lot of women might not understand that minutes in a mammogram or seconds of self-checking can save you and your family from having to go through what the Sanders have been living with since March. In the studio, I'm Angela Brower, News Source 16. All right, Angela.